Introducing change of any sort can produce unexpected results. If we decide to do something differently, we must make sure it doesn't lead to an accident. The golden rule on the management of change sets out how to do this. Many of our accidents have been caused by a failure to identify and control hazards created by change. The Dada Gurgud drilling rig operates in the Caspian Sea. The on-tour crew were preparing for a pressure test and the setting of a final cement plug to suspend the well. In the team were 36-year-old Aydin Aliyev and 44-year-old Suleiman Aliyev. The team were all very experienced. They knew what to do and how to do it, and the rig had operated without incident for nearly two years. But one small change in their equipment was about to have a catastrophic effect. The pipe string they were running was a cement stand, which with a cement stub added was two meters longer than their usual pipes. This meant they had to change the way they worked. The normal procedure was for the driller to lift the pipe stand out. And when it was disconnected, the two racking operators moved the pipe stand away from the rotary table, keeping it vertical. Then the driller lowered the travelling block, which weighs about 60 tonnes, ready to connect up to the next pipe stand. But the longer pipe stand with the cement stub created a difficulty for the racking operators. It had to be inclined to put it in the rack. This took longer than normal and for a short time the top of the inclined stand moved back into the path of the travelling block. At this point, three other factors were added to the fatal equation. The driller couldn't clearly see the top of the pipe stand more than 30 metres above him, or his colleagues on the drill floor. And he couldn't talk to them either, because his intercom had an intermittent fault. As normal, he started to lower the travelling block believing that the pipe was clear. It was too soon. The inclined pipe stand was not out of the way. The travelling block struck the top end of the pipe. The bottom end was driven into the drill floor, where it was momentarily caught. The travelling block continued to descend, its massive weight bending the pipe stand as it did so, and storing energy in the pipe like a coiled spring. As the bend increased, the bottom end suddenly freed itself from the combing, and the pipe stand whipped violently across the drill floor. The bottom end striking Aydin and Suleiman. They both died instantly from the impact. The additional hazards of racking a longer than normal stand of pipe was a change that hadn't been recognized or formally addressed. Also, their work plan hadn't allowed for the faulty comms system. The golden rule says work arising from any change within BP cannot proceed unless a management of change process is completed. So this golden rule applies to almost any change you can think of. It could be a change in personnel, such as a job using three people now rather than four. And changes in systems, like a new basis for holding stock and ordering spares. Changes in processes. That's what we do, and procedures, how we do it. And the rule applies to changes in equipment, like using a different length of drilling pipe. And changes in products, like something new for the market, or the materials or substances needed to make those products. And finally, the rule applies to changes in laws and regulations, such as changes in working hours. Do you think through the consequences of changes you introduce? The management of change process must include a risk assessment conducted by all those affected by the change and the development of a work plan that clearly specifies the time scale for the change and any control measures needed for equipment, facilities or processes. For example, if we increase steam throughput and increase pressure, will the pipework and vessels stand the new pressure? Clearly, there's increased risk of a blowout, so what new controls are needed? 
will we need new control measures affecting operations, maintenance and inspection procedures? Will our increase in steam throughput mean we'll need to increase maintenance? Will we need additional control measures involving training, personnel and communication? Will staff need training on the new steam throughput and who needs to be told? Will new documentation be needed? The work plan must be authorised by the responsible person through to completion. And then every affected person must be briefed on the control measures to be put in place to manage any proposed change. The drilling company involved in the Dada Gurgut incident has improved its ability to plan and carry out work safely and its procedures for managing change. Communications on the drill floor have also been improved. By understanding the golden rules, everyone can contribute to a safer workplace. Look at the work you're about to carry out and ask questions. If it's unsafe, stop work.